Hello users. So I would like to show in this video how to install uh, Caribou Lite in uh, the uh, Ubuntu system, uh, Dragon OS. So uh, I'm in uh, the projects. Uh, this is my subdirectory for everything. Here I have a uh, the um, previously uh, cloned Caribou Lite repo. I will change my directory into it. Uh, I already installed it, so I will remove the build directory. Uh, so Dragon. Okay, so we start over. Uh, so uh, what we do is we just run the installation uh, and wait. So uh, you may be asked to uh, provide the um, the password uh, as it is using the aptitude uh, installation for uh, the uh, dependencies, and then it uh, it is required to uh, add the uh, Ubuntu user to the group uh, of uh, Dalout group in this case in order to uh, provide access to hardware like uh, SPY and I2C and the SMI drivers um, uh, in this install script uh, what we try to do is to make the installation uh, the as easy as possible uh, obviously it is installing lots of the steps are uh, there are lots of steps so we have to uh, pay attention to the details here uh, currently it just installed the driver the driver was inserted into the uh, modules uh, library in uh, in uh, Linux so now actual uh, the actual uh, API the actual software is getting uh, installed So what I want to show you at the end of this uh, process is what are the uh, what are the artifacts of this installation, and uh, based on these artifacts, uh, there is a uh, like uh, the uh, debugging uh, and uh, troubleshooting steps that we have to take in order to see that everything goes to the right place. Um, those uh, debugging and the um, Okay, as it finished the installation, uh, we have to pay attention to this uh, step no number six, the environmental setting. So the um, currently in this case, the uh, configuration for the config txt file, uh, the famous config txt file in uh, the Raspberry Pi, is uh, okay because I already pre-configured it. But I will uh, run over it and see what's what is the what are the things that we have to check first of all uh, in the Raspbian uh, distribution the config.txt file is in a slash slash boot slash config txt but in this case in Dragon OS it's not located here you can see that the file is empty it is actually located in firmware you see uh, slash boot slash firmware slash config txt 
and it's uh, here so in order to edit this file we have to use nano currently I don't want to change it but if you want to change it you will use sudo uh, so uh, let's uh, get into this file uh, so what we got here is these two uh, parts uh, so the I squared C arm has to be commented out and as, uh, as well as the spy the generic spy which has to be commented out uh, the I squared C VC video core has to be on and the um, the overlay for spy number one spy bus number one with three chip selects has to be on this DT overlay and uh, basically that's that's it okay all the rest is not so important uh, after the installation is uh, finished we would like to reboot the system so we'll use sudo reboot or whatever however you want to reboot the system So now let's check the artifacts of the system. They are basic. Uh, they are not 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 very different from what we were uh, what we showed in the last uh, videos. So we have the first artifact is the dev SMI. This is the SMI driver. The SMI driver want to th that one uh, is in charge of communicating between the FPGA and the uh, SOC on the Raspberry Pi. Let's see what does this driver. Uh, wh what is this driver? Uh, we will use LS mode. Grab SMI. Okay. So uh, what we see here is that there is the uh, basic. Uh, BCM Broadcom's SMI driver and it is used by our proprietary uh, SMI Stringery device okay so let's see what is that SMI stream device in order to do that we will use model info and info set stream device so what we have what we have here is the uh, query bullet currently proprietary it is open source of course it is uh, available in the uh, in the repository but uh, it is not part of the mainline Linux system uh, it will be once it is fully stable it will be uh, inserted into the mainline Linux uh, kernel um, uh, uh, repository uh, for now it is out of uh, tree what's called out of tree kernel driver that is inserted by the uh, API uh, so uh, there are some parameters that this API that that uh, module uh, accepts uh, in order to make this uh, kernel module as um, generic as possible so that uh, someone else will be able to uh, develop over it uh, another different kind of hardware and to use it with a different kind of firmware so uh, it could it uh, accepts a few parameters in this case the FIFO parameters uh, addressing parameters the channel offset and things like that so that's it for that the other artifacts are the insertion of this uh, of this uh, kernel module and the uh, uh, let's see what's inside the mod mod probe. So first the mod probe uh, directory. 
uh, what we see here is the modprop directory and modprop directory is the uh, is the directive for uh, the distribution of which uh, modules to run and to blacklist uh, as the system starts so let's see what we got here uh, so this is the directive for the kernel while it is booting the system of how to uh, how to uh, import or uh, install the driver and what we see here is these parameters this is basically the FIFO MTU multiplier it says that the system has enough memory so let's uh, make a bigger or larger FIFO in the kernel module so that we will lose uh, the minimum amount of samples while we are streaming information and these are the hardware parameters for the offsets of the address lines uh, additional thing is the modules load Here we have also the SMI remod. So this tells the kernel module, uh, uh, the kernel uh, system. Uh, okay, uh, uh, when you are uh, starting the system, mod probe or load this kernel module. And then the last one. So the last one was this one. So it's the blacklist BCM SMI, which means that the this is the directive for the kernel not to load the portcom uh, default SMI driver, as it doesn't comply with a uh, with the uh, user space polling interface, which allows streaming. Now uh, let's get into the installation and clear the screen so we have here the installation uh, directory inside it we have the build uh, this is the this is the install this is the building directory uh, uh, basically um, the Coribulite util is installed uh, in the system it is installed in slash user slash bin unless you change the prefix uh, but we'll get into the installation library uh, anyway the build library in order to run the testing so uh, so we don't need the uh, pseudo part here uh, it was needed before because we were using uh, the slash dev slash de uh, slash memory uh, device that required a uh, root uh, uh, permissions from the user uh, we changed it so now we have all the system running in uh, the user space without the root permissions the same way like uh, other USB devices um, so now uh, this this uh, software is basically the testing software we are using it to test the system uh, we uh, also uh, uh, allow the usage of this of this software in order to run testing and uh, some tweaking on the hardware what we saw what we just saw is the IQ the modulation IQ uh, streaming of the lower band and here we have the higher band IQ streaming and uh, we he we see here the I and Q pairs uh, each of these lines each of these lines are is uh, basically a 128 uh, kilo uh, samples that are streamed to the software 
so uh, we are just showing the first four IQ pairs and the, four, uh, the last four IQ pairs uh, oops So here we can also hard reset the system, soft reset the system, uh, program the FPGA, uh, see what's inside the uh, 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 um, configure uh, buttons, LEDs, and so on. So uh, okay, I would say thanks, and let's. Uh, go to the next video.